So as most of you can tell already by the video title, I'm going to be teaching you on how to uh, properly use a revolver. I, um, oddly enough, out of the six handguns I have, only one of is a revolver. I, uh, I probably need to get some more of those. Great, excuse to buy more guns. I'm going to start backing up so I can head in the frame. But, um, I see a lot of people, and I blame Hollywood and video games for this, but they'll grab the cylinder spin it and then slap it shut which is horrible for any revolver any make any model just revolvers period you, you just don't do that uh, i want to get that out first and foremost you will destroy your revolver and uh you'll be out either of a revolver or an expensive gunsmith bill trying to get that fixed and i'll explain what that does to it but first um uh this it's my pocket pistol or revolver pocket gun um whenever i get up in the mornings i'm kind of lazy i just put on basketball shorts on the weekends and i don't feel like throwing a holster on or uh, a belt or anything like that so i'll just set my, put my 38 in my pocket and call it good and um uh, i keep it loaded because I, I keep it in the nightstand but obviously since it is loaded first thing i'm going to go through is unloading because I see a lot of people unloading them wrong. I'm going to change this up a bit. There you are, it's a little better. So first thing you do, obviously, hopefully you know, you keep your finger off the trigger at all times, loaded, unloaded, whatever. Get my stool out the way. But what you're gonna do is, you're going to look around, make sure everything around you is, it's, it's safe direction to point a loaded firearm. There's nothing on the other side of this wall. It's an outside wall. But uh, what you're going to do is you're going to cradle the revolver. Don't cover the muzzle. Good Lord, do not cover the muzzle. It's bad enough you're covering a forcing cone. But you've got your fingers right here. You're going to slide the cylinder release forwards and you're just going to gently push that out. And the cylinder comes out and it's out. Now your two center fingers, like you're shooting a web like Spider-Man, hold the revolver like that. And you can notice you've got your thumb right here by the ejector. So hold your other hand out, your firing hand. Hold your hand out. And all the rounds fall in your hand. Just like that. Now, since I'm filming, I'm going to take these. Set them on the bed, double check. Now we've got a completely unloaded firearm. We're not messing with any live ammunition. You can never be too safe with these. When I was on the fire department, some knucklehead actually sent a 357 in their thigh because they were messing with one of these without unloading it. Fun times. But um, next we'll go on to closing the cylinder. Like I'd previously stated, you don't spin it and then slap it shut if I can get in here uh, if you'll see that little tab right there this little button that's your cylinder lock cylinders on revolvers are made out of steel obviously because it's the chamber of the firearm you need that to be sturdy enough to support the uh literal explosion going on into it so that being said these things generally have quite a bit of weight to them so you've got to think centrifugal force um, an object in motion tends to stay in motion that little bar right there is what's stopping all the weight of that cylinder so the harder you spin that little sucker the more force it's going to put on that whenever you slap it shut because it's spinning it while it's going in until that little bar reaches one of these little notches right here. You'll hear it and you can see it clicked into one of those. Now watch as I slowly pull the trigger. I'll get the lamp back over here and you'll see that bar, hopefully. I doubt it, but maybe. Hopefully you can see that, but 
if not, I'll explain what it's doing. As you're pulling the trigger, that little bar is dropping down. Your low cylinder lock is dropping down to allow the cylinder to rotate. And it's going back under spring pressure. Not much, but very light spring pressure. Right as the cylinder begins to rotate. So if I get my finger, can you hear that? And you can hear it clicking back in. Right like that. So that's why you don't slap a cylinder shut. Now the proper way to do it is this little bar right here. This is called the crane. The little, little arm that swings out of the frame that holds the cylinder on is called the crane. I'm going to be moving around a lot in this video. Might as well just stay standing up. I'll move the camera around too. There we are. But anyways, so there are several ways you can close, close a revolver. I'm going to have my face out of frame for a minute. But after you open it, you can either get your thumb and you can push the cylinder itself and then move it around, make sure it's locked into place. Or, you put your thumb on the crane and then you can push it in until it latches. Now when you do that, you've already got your three fingers covering this, so as your thumb pushes that and it latches, you can move your fingers down and it'll rotate the cylinder until it locks in your cylinder lock. Then, you're ready to go. Now the next thing I would like to go in, this is strictly a double action. I mean, I, I can still, once I'm on target, if I want to, I can pull the hammer back halfway and then help it along with my thumb. I bob the hammer with my Dremel. Cause like I said, this is my, my pocket gun. So I didn't want a hammer spur getting snagged on anything. But I see a lot of people struggling with the triggers on these. Now, dry fire practice with some snap caps is a must with these if you want to be accurate. You can be stupid accurate even with a 2 inch snub nose 38 like this. Now, I see a lot of people, they'll sit there, they'll shake a little bit, and they'll just pull the trigger as much as they can. And you'll see the muzzle. I'll try to hold it as still as possible. I'll even point at the camera. Now you can see how much that muzzle is rocking back and forth. Your accuracy is garbage. It's crap. You might as well just be blasting into someone's gut. Now if you're actual target shooting, paper, steel, whatever, shooting bottles out in the backyard, whatever the heck you're doing, if you want to be accurate with one of these, you can definitely do it. I mean, a Smith & Wesson 642 is just as accurate as some 4-inch models if it's got a good rifled barrel on it. You can get amazing accuracy out of a good ammunition. Now what you do is, uh, I guess I should probably quit getting ahead of myself. On an automatic, which most people are familiar with, we all know you use the pad of your finger, the pad of that last portion of your finger. I can't remember what it's called for the life of me. But you get that, and that's what you use to pull the trigger with. The same principle applies with a revolver. Only you're not using this portion of your finger, you're using the center of your finger, right here. The reason why is revolvers, the grip is a lot closer to your trigger. Your trigger length is... A lot closer to the rest of your hand than a automatic I mean the ergonomics are just totally different so if you put your finger there you can see how much my fingers already moved and it's just sticking way out it's like chicken wing in a rifle you don't want to do that if I do that even two-handed you can really see how much it rocks back and forth inside to side you're just gonna get a lot of play now if you sit there and you use the middle of your finger, watch how much more accurate it is. So that's where your finger um, makes contact with the trigger. Now let's go into the trigger pull. If you practice enough, you can get 
I actually hold the darn thing properly. You can get a nice, smooth, steady squeeze. Um, as I, I forgot to mention, this is a uh, Taurus 856 Ultralight. Love this thing. Great budget gun. I uh, highly recommend a, a spring kit, too, from Wolf Springs. The trigger's atrocious. It's like a New York trigger in a Glock. But anyways, brain fart. What was I talking about? Oh, yeah. You get the, uh, the revolver, and I'll go into grip after this, but um, with enough practice, you can get to where you can make off pretty accurate quick squeezes, and you can dump a cylinder accurately pretty quick. Now, if you're target shooting, you want to stage the trigger. So let me see if I can do that, where you can see my finger. So what you're doing is start off doing it slowly and just ignore everything. Feel it. Because as you pull the trigger, you can feel the mechanism working inside. You can feel the cylinder turning. And it'll get to the point to where you can do it effectively enough. I'm kind of out of practice. I'll probably screw this up now I said that. To where you can spin that cylinder so fast. See, I just did it twice. You can rotate the cylinder without dropping the hammer. And you can feel the cylinder. And, I mean, you can feel everything once you get it down. You can feel the cylinder rotating. You can feel it fall, the, the cylinder lock falling into its groove. You can feel the arm internally rotating the cylinder. You can feel everything. But it'll get to the point where you can feel it coming back. And then you can feel the hammer release. And that's how you get an accurate shot. You pull the trigger about three quarters of the way through. And then you've got a nice, uh, very, very short pull. I'll uh, see if I can do that. Dang, didn't work. Okay, so let's see if I can show you the trigger. Okay, now watch how far my finger travels now. I mean, it's not much. And that is how you get an accurate shot. You get on target, turn the cylinder, hold it, readjust your sights, get it back on the target, and drop the hammer. And I'll go over that one more time. You acquire your target, rotate the cylinder, get back on the target, and you drop the hammer. Now, going into grip, I don't have a full size grip on this one, obviously. I mean, as you can tell, this is a uh, Uncle Mike's hard rubber grip. I love it, it's got a beautiful little swell on it. But it's the most comfortable two fingered grip I have ever felt. So, you can shoot this thing very accurately. I, I mean, I love it. But most of them aren't that way. Most of them are horribly uncomfortable and they just suck. To pick them up, hold them, shoot them, Lord, they're awful to shoot. Some of them will draw blood on you after your cylinder. But, um, going into your grip, if you're shooting one handed, it's a lot like shooting an automatic. You know, you shoot an automatic, thumbs forward is a very common way to shoot. Well, obviously, you've got your finger off the trigger and everything. You keep a good firm grip on it, but your thumb is what'll get you. Shooting one-handed, tuck your thumb in and squeeze it just like that. That way, it's out of the way of your trigger finger. Now, shooting two-handed, I'm just gonna go ahead and sit down with you. It's kind of hard to work around my bench. I need to get a tripod. I don't know why I don't. But there are several ways to do it. Um, most people can't really shoot this way. I can. I've got short thumbs. 
little thumb up for me being able to do this, but you don't want to shoot a revolver like this because you'll notice where my the tip of my thumb is is if your thumb is around this area that's called cylinder gap there's a tiny little gap in between the forcing cone or the the this end of the barrel it's called the forcing cone and the front of the cylinder it's called cylinder gap you got a tiny little gap right there but when you fire the revolver you'll get a crap ton of hot gases out I could probably get away doing it with just a 38 special and be fine. It would probably just burn a little bit. If you get up something really big, 44 Magnum, um, it's going to hurt bad. I've seen photographs of 500 Magnums taking the tip of someone's finger just plumb off like a laser. I mean, it'll just cut it clean to the bone. So I really don't recommend shooting like this unless whatever revolver you've got, you're definitely testing and um, sitting there sizing everything up just to be on the safe side I try not to shoot like that just because it's a bad habit anyways muscle memory is everything with firearms if you get a bad habit going and you create muscle memory with that one it might work fine with that particular firearm but you could pick up something else and you could really hurt yourself it, I mean that applies to a lot of things in life but especially firearms um, you, you can never be too careful with these things I mean, obviously, you don't want to be a safety sally, but I probably am. But uh, just use your head. The best thing to do is you've already got that thumb tucked in. If you want to shoot thumbs forward, you can tuck this one in, too. Now, another thing you want to watch is you want to make sure it's, it's kicked out like this and not in there like that because you've got a ledge right there on the cylinder. And as you shoot... That gun's coming back and it will jam the crap out of your knuckle and it's going to hurt bad. So you don't want to shoot with your thumb in like that. You want to kick it out to the side a little bit. And then you've got your both your thumbs tucked in. You've got a beautiful purchase on the revolver. And you've got plenty of room for your trigger finger. Now another thing you can do, and if any of y'all have ever seen Dirty Hair, you'll probably seen this but uh, you can get your thumb and you can just wrap it around the top just like that if you've got a spurless hammer like this one that works phenomenally because you don't have a spur getting in your way if you've got a spur on your hammer depending on where your thumb lies that could really inhibit it because that hammer is going to come back the spur is going to hit your thumb and it's not going to come back all the way and then you're just going to keep squeezing you're not going to get a shot Actually, I believe Dirty Harry just held his wrist like this. That doesn't do anything. That's, that's pointless and worthless. You might as well be take up an automatic. But um, that's grip. Basics. I mean, I'm not going to go into anything advanced. I'm still learning myself. But there's a reload, unload. Um, Hopefully it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways, because again, I've seen plenty of idiots do it. If you're messing around with a revolver and you pull the hammer back, make sure it's unloaded. Unless you're at the range and you're already on target. Meaning, you've got a target back there, you get your sights lined up, then you pull the hammer back, you line your sights back up, and then you pull the trigger. Don't be sitting there with a loaded revolver. And doing that and then lowering the hammer in the house if you do that I'm not gonna sugarcoat it you're an idiot I'm gonna call it like it is you're dumb you are d-u-m dumb don't do it I've seen plenty of people on gun fail compilations sitting there farting around with a revolver either not checking it knowing it's loaded and thinking they're fine or whatever i don't even know what's going on in their heads but they've got a revolver it's loaded they pull the hammer back they go to release the hammer and it slips oh no i just sent around on a wall or ceiling or neighbor's dog whatever don't do it i will probably end up making a video on firearm safety at this point i i, I could see myself doing that 
But anyways, there's Revolver Basics. These are phenomenal guns um, for concealed carry nowadays, even today in the um, with all the modern polymer guns. The issue with a lot, I won't go into it in too much detail, but a lot of modern day polymer guns, this one is unloaded. I carry this condition three around the house just because I don't want to keep chambering and unchambering around all the time because I get bullet set back if I do that. I'll make another video explaining that maybe. I don't know. But um, I do carry with around in the chamber out in town. But I just I want, I want that known. <laughs> I'm not one of those. Oh, I've got plenty of time to sit there and rack around. But um, going back on the subject before I I'll chase the rabbit too long. If someone is on top of you beating the holy crap out of you and you carry an automatic SIG, P365, Glock 26, 43, Springfield Hellcat, whatever. Not the Springfield Hellcat. It's It's got a standoff device. But um, the issue with these is if someone's on top of you and you need what I'd call a shower gun, I got that from Clint Smith. That's phenomenal. Look him up, definitely. Clint Smith. But, um... And you go to shove that gun up into their chest cavity, gut, whatever, and you go to pull the trigger. Functional gun, right? You can hear the striker dropping. Watch what happens if I shove it up into someone's gut. Here's what's happening. Gun's out of battery safety mechanism put into automatic so that they don't have an added battery discharge and blow your hand off. Guess what? This won't do that. You've got a solid steel barrel sticking out of it. That's it. Another thing is, if you carry in your coat pocket or loose fitting basketball shorts or whatever, these are like the best thing you can carry because again if you don't have time to get a full draw and get on a target you can fire this inside a coat pocket or a shorts pocket or inside a purse whatever because the only moving parts you have you've got a rotating cylinder and you've got a hammer moving back on an automatic you've got the slide reciprocating back and forth so uh, you, you can get one shot off with one of those but you're going to have to get the pistol out and you're going to have to clear malfunction whether stovepipe, failure to feed, failure to eject most likely or what have you. You're going to have issues. You don't have that with this. You just keep pulling the trigger till you hear a click. Another thing, you get a, uh, a malfunction on that uh, with a uh, bad round. Whether it's light primer strike, uh, you've got crap in your firing pin or striker channel whatever and you don't make solid contact with that primer and that round doesn't go off with this you don't have to tap and rack you just pull the trigger again bang that's why the only 22 long rifle i would ever carry would be a revolver probably an eight shot but um there, there's just so many pros to having this now obviously i would carry this as a backup i don't carry a backup gun i don't really see the need to i'm stuck with my nine but uh, that, this is just another pro to these. I'll quit going into that. I'll just make a separate video with all that. But um, y'all take care. Be safe. Remember, always use your heads and follow firearm safety. Y'all take care and be have, have a good one.